All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome back Jermaine Edwards, who is all the way over in the UK in London. How are you doing, Jermaine? I'm well. Excited to be here again with the kind of fabulous uh, Pipeliner. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, Jermaine, you know, helps enable customer uh, leaders and key account teams to create recurring revenue relationship growth and retention results they can trust with their most important customers. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, customer leadership, why customers need leadership and not management. Um, so Jermaine, let's jump straight into it. Uh, I mean, most people, when they when they land a customer, they immediately say, okay, like let's get into a, a customer management process or a customer success process. And and, a, yeah, and most companies do it the same, but you're saying, no, that's not the way to go is that you really need to provide leadership to your customers. Yeah, indeed. I, I think the old antiquated, antiquated kind of view of, of management is somehow we are managing a series of interactions uh, that will go in our favor without any really intentional work being done to uh, inspire, um, to to uh, to provide um, insight that kind of earns the trust and recognition of the clients that we work with, but also that um, helps them to shape the future that they want to create as well. And that's not a management um, activity; it's a leadership activity. And I may be just playing playing with words and semantics here, but I think the shift in language is a really important reference point for um, speaking with our teams around how they approach their work with clients. The moment I've said that with clients that I work with or working with teams is they actually, you're not customer managers, you're customer leaders because they're coming to you for a very distinct reason to give them guidance and, and appropriate advice to help them navigate uncertainty and provide them with a very specific result. That is a leadership effort and that is not a management activity. And what that allows us to do is to think of, well, if we were to lead, what would leadership look like as a different set of activities in management? And that's what I'm, I'm really interested in. Yeah. And, and obviously, in order to do that, though, you have to establish a, rela a good relationship with the customer and a trust relationship. And I think that the relationship building part of this is critical to lay the foundation to be able to be uh, in a leadership position. Yeah, I think so. We can't get around that. I think the relationships are, are essential. And if we think about relationships, we often think about it as this thing that simply just happens. And um, once we have it, then all of a sudden we have access to the holy grail of, of all kind of trust related to the client. That's not what happens. Trust is on a continuum. And so we're always having to better and think about how we can um, create environments with our clients that produce high value relationships just like we would do in any kind of relationship with your your spouse your significant mm -hmm. other a family member or a friend uh, it requires an investment of time but most importantly between you and the client it requires commitment clear expectations and then trust comes as a, as a reference point to your own competence but also your character uh, and i think if we don't hold those things in mind or teach relationships from that vantage point what will often happen is that will kind of assume um, commitment by a client because they're moving or perhaps cooperating with us when actually what they're doing is simply acting or behaving from a place of convenience. So when something changes and is less convenient, there may not be as loyal a customer later on. Yeah, no, that, 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 those, are, those are great points, uh, Jermaine. And I think the, the other part of it is that uh, in order to do that, in order to build that relationship, in order to build that trust, then the, the salesperson uh, needs to have, uh, or the company needs that that selling to them needs to have a level of of confidence uh, in their own abilities and in what they offer and in the insights they can bring. Because oftentimes, I mean, you've seen this, Jermaine. Oftentimes, somebody lands a customer and then they like they basically wrap it in cotton wool and say, "Okay, don't touch it because I don't want anything to go wrong here." <laughs> yeah, we can be quite protectionist, and I've often kind of looked at this and I said, "Look." Um, Sometimes it's, un, sometimes it's difficult to see whether or not we're actually managing, quote unquote, our relationship from fear or from a place of, of growth and a growth mindset perspective. And I think sometimes we can move between those two different experiences or perhaps um, uh, this is called beliefs that oftentimes we are managing a customer through the lens of fear of what would happen if 
rather than a, a, an abundance and open mindset, which actually says the same question, but it's thinking positive. Well, what would happen if, hey, we were to do this, 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 how would that transform the relationships? I think there is this kind of shift in, in perspective that uh, uh, if we are thinking about equipping and ensuring that our teams are able to adequately go out and prove that you are the best alternative in the marketplace and where your clients should invest, it does come through a shift in mindset before a shifting activity. I think we often don't think about what mindsets go along with that behavior, what mindsets go along with those skills, because you can have somebody who's skilled but still not trained yeah. uh, and trained from a mindset perspective to carry across those convictions into a conversation. No, absolutely. Because sometimes you'll have uh, salespeople who will say, well, you know, I'm trying to build a relationship with the with the customer, but they're not interested. They have our product and they have our service and they kind of want us to be hands off. So and, and you often wonder, is that is that because the customer doesn't see any value in ongoing interaction with the salesperson or the salesperson doesn't have the, as you said, the confidence or the, the mindset to, to build that relationship or a combination of the two? Yes, it's one of those things. Look, I think we have to make some distinctions between the kinds of clients that we have. Not every client is created equal. And mm -hmm. sometimes you take on clients that actually just aren't necessarily a good fit for you. And so if you are finding a client that does not want to engage and you've genuinely, genuinely put forward forthrightly at the beginning that how we do, um, how we work with clients is by looking to actively build relationships that are mutually valuable and experiential and really uh, of benefit to each other. And you're saying that you want to have this mutual exchange and they're unwilling to do the same. Then for me, you've already entered into a really toxic environment. And so that needs to be a red flag and that client needs to be treated adequately or, or appropriately to that kind of behavior. It doesn't mean that you completely discard the client. That's, that's up to you commercially as the business and what you want to do. But I think if you're genuinely seeding up front with the client that these are the expectations that I want to hold, are you willing to kind of adhere to those? Do you believe those same things? And the client says, absolutely, then fantastic. The client says, well, then I'm sure about this, or they say something different, then that's, that could be a real red flag. And I think every client needs to be, every company needs to be aware of that. And every team, uh, team leader and team needs to be aware of the kind of client they're actually working with. Yeah, and I like also what you just said earlier about, uh, I mean, set, setting the expectation with the with somebody who comes on board and to say, you know, we're, you know, we want to have a relationship, we want to add value, we want to do all of these things, kind of sort of setting it out to say, yeah, we're not just go we're not just going to fulfill what you just ordered, we're going to go above and beyond. Yeah, and, and I think that's really important. I think most, and what's interesting here is that I don't think this is everybody, but I think a lot of clients who I see walk into relationships with suppliers genuinely want to have a, a fruitful, profitable relationship that is, that is, is kind of a stress-free stress, stress -free in some ways. Mm -hmm. they, they want it, they want it to be enjoyable. What tends to happen is that we carry this baggage with us, definitely as buyers, but also as sellers. And oftentimes when buyers walk into relationships and they can be triggered sometimes by seemingly insignificant things to us, but are big deals to them because they've been treated unfairly in a different place. And so I think also uh, within the relationship, we should also be aware that when we do or may experience a quote unquote negative behavior from a, a client or simply a behavior that's perhaps misaligned to what your expectation is, we should also be aware of what are the triggers that might be being played out here that we may need to address that may be not even about you at all, but actually about a past experience that client would have had, but somehow your behavior has reminded them of something that they should be wary of. And we often don't talk about those triggers, but it's one of those things I often will have with my clients. And I'll talk about um, experience that they've had with, with, with partners and suppliers that perhaps just haven't gone that well. And I'll ask them to, hey, walk me through um, that relationship. Talk to me about the, the feelings that you had. Talk to me about the situations that were unresolved. Talk to me about how those things were managed with you and, and what, what kind of supported in kind of making you kind of lead to that decision to leave. And what you'll get is a, just a, a really rich kind of concussion of, 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 of uh, descriptions that a client will give. And oftentimes in your own mind, it would seem you know, pretty insignificant. Like, okay, they didn't answer your email. But actually when you go into it, you realize it was a consistent set of behaviors over time that slowly eroded confidence. And oftentimes we believe that somehow it's just like this big event, like you, you show for the customer that caused the client to leave. No, 
It's simply a series of unmet expectations done consistently over time that has not been addressed. Yeah, no, I think that's very powerful, Jermaine, because uh, I mean, especially on the triggers front, I think that's something that we absolutely underestimate even in ourselves sometimes. Um, but we certainly underestimate in in customers. And I think that that's a that what you say is is very um is very important that you actually need to investigate these and figure out what's going on behind it because otherwise it's just going to compound. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, and then, so, I mean, part of it as well, I guess, is, is that you need to figure out how to have a regular communication cadence with your customers. Cause that's another thing I often hear is, you know, once people have gone through say implementation or the services have been delivered or whatever, that um, the kind of communication kind of trails off a little bit because there was, uh, to, to your point earlier, there was never an expectation set of continued engagement. Yeah, it is a real challenge. And I find obviously one of the big things here is around that kind of stakeholder management or the holding of those relationships um, that are important to making sure that the, the services that you deliver, the products that you deliver to your customers are, are kind of done in a way where you have you know, as, as least amount of friction as possible. Um, so let's talk about, because this is interesting to me, and I'm really passionate about this area here of just relationship engagement. I'm, I'm trying to avoid relationship management because I think, um, as well as I understand the phrase and, and the sentiment behind it, I think we, I think there's a need for a language shift in order to, mm -hmm. to kind of create new new perspective here. So this kind of relationship engagement of understanding um, the cadence of what a client wants. And oftentimes we talk about, you're know, asking the client what they actually want. And they say, well, you know, I want you to talk with me once a week, or I want to talk with you once a month. What I actually believe is that we should set the tone and then check in to see what needs to be adapted. Yeah. So I think we need to be leading with the client because we know what happens within those first three or three to six months. We've got the history, we've got the record. We know what takes place when we're onboarding a client. So you lead. You tell them what is needed, give them a real reason why that is that is you know, acceptable to some to a varying degree, but you lead that and then review afterwards. But at the moment you put the power on them, all of a sudden they're leading and you're the one subservient. And it should be um, it should be the other way around, especially at the beginning of a relationship, because they're asking you to support them with the solution, with the resolution to something specific. I think we should we should stop. Um, perhaps unconsciously giving up our power and the ability yeah. to lead early. Yeah, and I think I was just writing that down. I just think that, yeah, I think sometimes we, we're in provider mindset where we think, okay, we're providing the service, we're providing the product, as opposed to what you say, uh, as opposed to what you're talking about here, in, and that is actually leading and engaging and showing and bringing your experience to bear and, and making the whole interaction so much more, so much richer. Mm. Oh man, absolutely. I think people are just kind of really starving for that right now. I think particularly during the, the pandemic, what, what I found more than anything is my clients weren't, weren't looking necessarily for an immediate solution. They're looking for leadership. Mm. They're looking for their partners to show up in a way that helps them to kind of create new options and not provide them with the same kinds of solutions and answers. And leaders show up with brand new questions. Leaders show up with challenge. Leaders show up with new perspectives that allow people to see what's possible. And I think, um, and unfortunately, I think a lot of customers were let down during the pandemic. And I was fortunate, I think one of the few companies perhaps were able to keep 100% of our clients during that time um, with one or two outliers who kind of lapsed and unfortunately um, and closed, closed their doors. Um, but outside of that, um, the big thing that was encouraging my customers to do is to go out and lead. And leadership is tough. I recognize that there's pain part of it. There's a lot of challenge. There's a lot of deep thinking that's needed, but in the end, it pays off because, it, it, look, among everything else, I think effort goes a long way. If you can demonstrate effort with a client, even if you don't immediately come to some kind of solution, that will still get rewarded. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, and I think as well, uh, your points about the the pandemic as well. I mean, I think people, I think it's it's, I think people have rethought a lot of things and um, the whole relationship element, the whole leadership element, all of those, I think, have come very much back into sharp focus 
now because as you said i mean a lot of people were let down a lot of people felt uh, you know leaderless a lot of people felt rudderless during that that whole period so i think how you engage during that time and how you engage going forward i think can really separate you oh well, yeah I, I i agree 100 percent. So i think those clients who aren't moving from you know customer management to really customer leadership particularly when it comes to engaging in relationships i think i'm missing out on what the new expectation is from a client. We actually, or even a new one, it's always been there, but very few people have really embraced it consistently with every single client that they've brought on board and therefore get very kind of uh, inconsistent results across the board. Um, but there's, there's a, a wider picture here um, that I think it needs to be embraced. And this whole idea of, of you know, what I call customer mastery. Like how do we move from just wanting to manage things to really mastering the, 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 the idea of engagement? Uh, what would that look like? What would it mean? What would our business look like if we were a if we had you know, true mastery over the area of, of onboarding and, and really providing environments for our clients where they felt not only kind of um, seen, heard, understood, but were truly thriving um, just through the relationship alone and not necessarily just through, just through the solutions. And that's a really, really good, that's a really powerful place. If, if, your, if your clients can, can gain benefit and grow just as much through your relationship as they could through your products and services, then you're really delivering something unique to the marketplace. Yeah, no, that fantastic. That's a that's a that's a great way to put it. Uh, put it, Jermaine, and a great opportunity for people because this is what people are looking for right now and and craving that additional level of of engagement and you know providing that leadership. And I think yeah, you're you're absolutely right. If you can combine those to your product and service plus the the engagement and the leadership part, I mean you that's where you become sticky. Oh man. And that's what every single organization wants. They want to be that okay, you're calling it trusted advice, but ideally they want to be that kind of place that the, the, the clients never want to leave. And uh, so how do, we, how do we do that? Well, it does start with a shift, I'll come back to this term, a shifted mindset before a shifting activity. And where I, I find that a lot of clients are adopting way too many tactics and not thinking about who they want to really become to their clients. So starting with that philosophical approach and then working out from that. Yeah, this is one of my favorite sayings from the, like Sun Tzu's The Art of War. It's something like, you know, strategy without tactics is the long way to victory. Um, uh, tactics, tactics without strategy is a noise before defeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. That is awesome. Yes, in, in these, you, you have to know where you're going. Yeah, um, absolutely. What that is. Well, listen, Jermaine, as always, this has been great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. All of Jermaine's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do remind people what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, today, just like you mentioned right at the top of the, the, uh, the call, we're helping leaders, customer, commercial leaders who own a commercial number, retention number, truly, I mean, and truly eliminate those customer challenges, grow repeatedly those customer revenue and relationship results that they want, and do that predictably at scale in any environment. We want to really want to help as many people as we can truly become customer leaders in their area. Yeah, fantastic. Again, listen, thanks, uh, thanks, Jermaine, for joining us. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks.